So I'm doing the little article on it at the moment. But like I say, because we uh, we jumped into the show quite quickly, so I didn't have time to prepare anything. So you'll have to wait either to the next show or have a look on my uh, on my page when I've uh, when I've updated it. Um, the thing that concerned me is I saw quite a few instances of teachers um, and influential people um, having the MVP title. Now I think it was Roy recently that covered on his site um, the comments of an ex MVP who spoke out against Microsoft um, and how there's very little or there's alleged to be very little skill or worth in the MVP program basically because they're giving them away to uh, anybody which was I think was the upshot of the, the gentleman's comments I can't feel like I remember what his name was um, but what concerned me more was sort of the, the influential people and we're not talking government ministers or anybody like that we're talking about people that have influences on people's education um, I wouldn't like to think of my children going to a teacher uh, that was Microsoft influenced. I would like them to go to a teacher who's maybe experienced quite a few computer solutions. And if that person is going to teach them computer science or computer studies, I want that person to have a general, broader knowledge so they can say, right, well, this is Linux, this is Windows, and, and give them a more general view so that the kids can make up their own minds and follow their own path. Um, Sorry, well, it gets yeah. worse, but if I may add something, uh, yeah. one thing I should point out is that I picked up an article from about 10, 12 years ago. The article is gone now. I made a copy of that. Uh, I have copies of everything, basically, that I, I decide to keep it locally for myself. And I reproduced an article which exposed Microsoft, I think, in one of the uh, California-based big, big press websites. Obviously, something that's officially kind of confirmed by the company, too. And that's the Microsoft basically paid professors, I think, $200 at one time to mention the tools of Microsoft. So they would say something like, oh, you should use Word for that, or you should, you know, Windows is great, and they pay him a check to do that. Uh, that goes back to the 90s, and this was uh, documented. This happens to this day to some extent. And one of the concerning issues, and I, I know we don't bring up the Gates Foundation too much, and I received a big email about it today. Uh, a lot of the power is being passed now to get back to Gates, but he's doing it somewhere else. And one of the things he's doing in schools now, he gains a lot of power. He replaces the existing people in uh, that have some powers over school, and he puts the sympathetic people towards his programs and towards the things that serve him. Uh, so the, the changes in staff make a lot of difference. A lot of people don't think of the committees of for what they are, it's not just words and papers, it's actual people. And if you can replace the people, you can change the biases. Now, what happens also, we mentioned things before, uh, you know, we mentioned things like the events before, and we talked about, you know, people should refuse access uh, by these people. What happens when they replace the people and put one of their minions inside the panels and panel staffing or uh, you can call it something like entrazing is how I usually call it, although that's more of a political term where you try to take over someone else's party by putting your own people inside. Um, that's also an issue because uh, if you look at people who are deciding for a false dam, for example, some of them have ties and very direct ties with Novell. Now, of course, Novell is being paid by Microsoft, which in turn has all kinds of obligations to to Microsoft, and these people cannot really say no to Microsoft. It's a, it's a lot more complicated, and you have to look at who's making these decisions. And I, I've been writing about FOSTEM since like 2007, and every year they would have both Novell as one of the big sponsors and one of the big kind of leaders, you know, rallying everyone around, and, and Microsoft would kind of accompany them as well, you know, in all kinds of cases, and you can see the impact on the person runs the conference, he does not, he, he cannot say anything negative about Microsoft, it's usually he and sometimes, especially, well, especially in FOSS, it's usually a male who's kind of running the conference for whatever reason. Um, what, one of the other issues with entry, I mean, this is a subject I wanted to bring up before, uh, is what happens in Nokia now, because as you probably know, Nokia is the main contender to that can compete with Android. Uh, as far as a Linux-powered uh, operating system for mobile phones is concerned. So this is uh, a very promising, a very uh, liberal, free kind of operating system based on the LSB, uh, the Linux standard base. Um, and and that's supposed to be the Intel and Nokia-backed uh, solution based in both mobile and, and, uh, and, and MIMO. Um, but what happens now, of course, Microsoft put its, one of its presidents, the CEO of Nokia, which was then greeted by Balmer as he left the company and actually ditched, supposedly ditched the company. He was kind of welcomed as he moved into Nokia. And what we know 
uh, based on some reports, or at least these reports allege, allege, for, allege, allege that this is true, is that on the 11th of the month, I think, uh, they will announce a deal with Microsoft, so Nokia, who, which is working very closely now and has been one of the top submitters to, to Linux, is going to announce some sort of deal with Microsoft. And also the CEO, which of course is a former Microsoft president, is supposed to announce the firing of about half the uh, maybe board or managers or some kind of executive ranks, basically mass firing of people. So it kind of makes you wonder what happened inside the company and to what extent it has been changed from the inside in the same way that VMware and Yahoo had been changed before. So this really concerns me because you see a lot of these influence games and a lot of the changing of people uh, changing the fabric of what the community is and how it treats, uh, you know, entrants like Apple and Microsoft and so on. Well, there's one, there's one um, thing when it comes to individuals um, and trying to, to remove or target individuals or uh, get individuals to agree to things that are not free software friendly. The other sort of elephant in the room here is the fact that many many people who use free software um, in whatever form in their, their, in their home life when they get home, a lot of these people make their living from um, working on Windows or working with Windows. They might be working in an office where the, their employer doesn't, doesn't know anything other than Windows two, uh, or Office 2003 uh, on XP. Um, and they might have tried, but they don't, they're just not in the position to do anything, so they have to use Windows all day at work, and only when they come home do they get the respite of uh, being able to use Fedora or Debian or whatever it is. Um, uh, if they're developers, that might be the, the same. They might have to work on ASP or .NET at work, um, and then come home and they can work on Python or Java or whatever it is they work on. Um, so a lot of these people, if you're talking about individuals, um, a lot of these people, when they go to conferences or when they turn up, they can't they can't speak out against their employer, um, and they, they know that they're they're still trying, they're still in that technical space. So if they make too much of a a stink about that, then if they get blacklisted, then they might have trouble getting work, and especially if it's like a um, a town or a city, an area where they are that proprietary software and the companies all around about them where they could work, are, are, the majority of them are all Microsoft partners in some way, then they've got to tread very, very carefully. Um, as much as they, they believe in the, the whole free culture, free software stuff, um, and they do that on their own, they've got to tread a very careful line uh, because they've got to put food on the table. Right, Roy, uh, or Gordon, have, have we got another topic we can... Uh shift on to because uh, I think I happen to uh, he brought up an interesting point uh, because lots of places of work she tried to combine Windows and Linux because some people do not feel comfortable with Linux what I found well uh, in my current place of work lots of people use Windows on the desktop especially and they find themselves uh, having to know some some degree Linux because all the servers, everything that's actually doing serious work is running Linux and they have to connect to these things from PuTTY or from uh, all kinds of terminal emulation things and, and sometimes they have to access FTP and, and, and they're not used to the notion of working this way, they're used to opening, you know, using the uh, using uh, uh, C, uh, CIFS to access, you know, network, uh, what's it called, neighborhood or whatever it's called in Windows and I can even read recall how it works, but they're used to dragging and dropping things uh, and working within a purely Windows environment. Uh, and and they increasingly, and, and they say this to me, you know, I have to learn Linux because I cannot do my work if I don't learn Linux, which which is really kind of music to my ears because it, it means people will have to move to Linux not because they want to ditch Microsoft, it's because it's becoming a necessity. Everything runs Linux uh, as, as soon as you run something serious, as soon as you uh, you, you, if you run something scientific, it makes no sense to pay licenses and then to every time you expand things to ask for a new license or to check the uh, user agreements. Um, I, I personally use a dual head uh, machine with, with, with Linux on it and right now I'm running GNOME and KD on the same session. So I'm actually opening a Plasma 
uh, session on my uh, GNOME uh, on my on my GNOME desktop. Basically, it's 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 kind of a nice combination of way of having both at the same time in both applications.